push the talk button this whole time. So press the button that kills. You should be, yeah. I. I. Press the button that kills sir, Nick Young. All right, so. Sir, you hi are people. You are stupid. Hi there, hi. people. We, uh, the two of us are two of the members of the Duvet yeah. MC team. We were, uh, we we have essentially a goal of trying to get at least some sort of standard library for every single version of Minecraft in existence. Starting with yeah, the you're, having, you're, you're having a talk. You're having a talk by the duvet team that you don't get. Like the whole we don't have the fucking reason you made this. Kill that Idiot. person. <laughs> As all the things are getting thrown. All right. So, uh, this talk here, uh, welcome to the first talk of the, of the show. This is fantastic. Uh, this is going to be about how unsafe reflection and uh, ASM are all used in, our, in, in the Minecraft modding seed what they are, why they're used, and other things. Oh boy, I need to set the- <laughs> I do not know if the mic is set up properly. Um... I do believe it's set for channel 15. I just don't know if... if yeah, yeah um, I don't know. Press H in chat if you can hear us. Vix, you are... Vix, you are very quiet. H. H. <laughs> H. H, but Vix, you're very quiet. Hey Nick, you need a mutant Discord. Hey. Oh, pardon. Hey. Set your amplification all the way or something. Ah, uh, okay. Kill young Nick Young. Ah. Nick. Is this what did Young do? What the fuck? Vix. This what did he do? I can smash the third one out. Wait, Wait, I will get I him out at some point. Young is real now? Okay. Wait. Young is real and I will like, kill him. Am I stuck to Just you? Just to get the truth out. <laughs> the truth about Young's better sex. Wait, I think I'm stuck to you. Are you? Um, I my know. username is... Like, try moving around, like... Yes. Rotating. I uh, can't get up. Uh, oh. Oh, I'm fine now. Beep. Alright, so. All these things. What are they? Why are they used? Who knows? Well, we know. So. Uh, ASM, I don't, I, th I think that's what I have first, yeah, ASM, uh, yeah, so ASM is a bytecode manipulation library, it Did he die? Okay, so I forgot I have to press <laughs> the put the talk button. Uh, I'm gonna change that real quick. Test, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Fantastic. All right. H H H. So now I don't need to press the push talk. That's so much handier. ASM, uh, bytecode manipulation library. Uh, it's used a lot for runtime mod modification, primarily right before the class loads. Uh, as oh, all the sounds, all right. It's used. Uh, is the screen updated? I can't tell. Uh, it's it's used for. Oh boy! All right. Well. We can hope that maybe, uh, oh boy. Does, does this hate me? Probably. Um, or I just didn't press the button right. All right, anyway, here we go. Uh, it's used a lot in Forge uh, core mods, 
as well as in the Mixin library, if you have done literally anything with modding the game or debugging some mods, so you may understand some of the pain there. Uh, then we have our next fun little thing, unsafe. Now, a good note about unsafe is that it is actually in JVM, and it's used for direct memory access and modification. Now, that is also a very dangerous thing overall. Uh, it It's used primarily in large part for the... Uh, for like large frameworks, like I think Spring probably uses it, and other things like that, and even the JVM itself uses it in some places, specifically for the goal of getting uh, getting very fast operations overall, and it's not really a recommended option. Because it's meant as a, it's meant as a JDK internal primarily. But uh, we do have a reflection. It, that is a much better overall option. Reflection is primarily used for. Uh, oh great! I need to actually see things better. Reflection is considered the good choice. It's not the best choice, but it's generally what is recommended if you need to do anything based on the runtime state. Uh, it's less op or it gives you less ability to do things overall as unsafe or ASM, but it sometimes ends up being the only reasonable option. It is used a lot in uh, Forge, especially, but also other mod developers for the purpose of getting access to Minecraft's code in situations where it's either not public or otherwise hard to reach. Yeah, you can throw question books at any time. They'll just get in the queue, and then I'll see them and have to accept or deny them. Uh, let's get to some examples real quick, because examples are always a helpful thing. Uh, we have uh, Lawn Trapper is the first one. It does lots of things. It's primarily used for old Minecraft versions, and it does allow you to modify classes by requesting a, a, a byte array and returning uh, the one that you actually want to load. But that also means it's not very easy for mod developers to actually use, and it's very exclusive to only Minecraft. Uh, we also have Mixin, which is good for most of uh, trans transformations that you may want to have. Uh, and it's generally the good option in modding in the modern era. Uh, but there is also less freedom in the kinds of transformations you can make. Uh, while we're here, because it's a reasonable thing, uh, there's this question here. What's the difference between ASM and Mixins? ASM is primarily what's used for... Uh, the under the hood implementation of changing classes and things where mixins are used as a higher level kind of thing for the most part written in Java or if you're doing certain things that can be written in things like Kotlin but it's gen but mixins are generally aimed at uh, simpler transformations or more easy to understand things like adding extra checks or doing things like that within the Minecraft thing. So beyond that, then uh, what if we 
did worse? Assuming this actually works. What if we did worse? Because there are many things that you can do. For example, here's a bit of code. Uh, if you have no clue what any of this does, good. This is something that I would not recommend anyone doing, but it is something that I have done. Let's take this piece by piece, because this is a lot. Uh, we have here first a simple uh, field definition. If you've had any background in Java, you know what this is. If you haven't, basically we're just setting up a thing so that we're able to access things in the future. Next we have a uh, next we have a try catch block because exceptions happen a lot, especially if you're doing the cursed things that I do. Uh, oh wait, sorry, that's a static because I'm dumb. But you know, this is the try catch block. But it's inside the static initializer, so that way we can set the field at the proper time like we're supposed to. Uh, then we have the first bit of code. We have uh, we have the requesting of the unsafe. As I had said earlier, unsafe is for direct memory access. We will be doing some direct memory access later in this block of code. Uh, the one little thing is that this is written specifically for any version of Minecraft or any version of Java with unsafe in it, including more recent versions where the compiler will not let you specify unsafe specifically. So if you've if you've written this kind of if you've accessed unsafe in Java 8, you may see this as slightly unfamiliar because uh, unsafe in older versions worked better as just a simple class uh, access and then you're able to just set the type correctly but you have to access unsafe with the class dot for name and setting it to just a generic object in modern versions because the compiler will not let you uh, access or will not ac let you access the class in uh, later versions so if we continue, here's the next painful thing. We now have three methods here. They are all from the unsafe. We need to do these instead. Oh, boy. Oh, no. It seems like people are crashing or otherwise unable to join. Uh, That's not good. Uh, is, all right. Recordings are being made, so hopefully it's not terrible. I'll I see. wait a couple moments to see if if people are able to make it back in or if things are just breaking. So uh, we have. I can continue iterating here. Uh, is are the questions able to scroll? I don't think so. Uh, I believe I did see a question in chat. Uh, yeah, why why is it forced as reflection? Uh, so in the unsafe class, there is a fun little issue where the you cannot just use unsafe dot get unsafe because that method checks who's calling, and if it is not from the JVM itself, it will throw an error saying that you're. Uh, accessing it outside of where you should, so... I'm getting potatoes thrown at me. So, hopefully people have either gotten back in or seen or gotten to the stream, so... I shall continue on here. Next, we have uh, the actual things that we're looking for, method handles. This is a Java 8 and newer feature that allows a different kind of runtime based access. But uh, with this, we have to do more reflective calls. And these lines here are first getting a an instance to the uh, impl lookup, the inside mechanic on a free or a completely trusted version of a method handle check, which would allow you to access anything. We go then go on to getting the base and offset, 
so that way we are able to access it through unsafe. Usually the base in this case would be the act the class itself, but some JVMs probably implement it a little differently at times, so it's safest just to have that extra object class. And then the meaty line right here, trusted lookup equals this mess of a function call where we are getting from the unsafe, we are using it to get an object, or at least the address which Java interprets as an object, to the trusted lookup object. At this point, assuming nothing has gone wrong, we now have full access to every single part of the JVM entirely universally. And that is a very interesting, not really something that anyone should ever have to worry about, but here we are. And then we get to the catch clause. It's good to look at this for a short moment. This is an unchecked uh, throwing statement where Java has two general kinds of statements. There are the checked exceptions and unchecked exceptions. The checked exceptions require you declare what the exception is in order to throw that exception. Whereas an unchecked exception, you can just throw at any time, such as a runtime exception or null pointer exception. But this means that uh, if you want to throw a, a checked exception, you either have to declare that you're going to throw it or you have to wrap it in an unchecked exception. This little thing abuses the fact that that's only checked at compile time by uh, creating a given very or g creating some sort of exception that's just in this case being called t declaring that it's throwing that but then not going into the details as to what actually is getting thrown so that way at runtime what happens is it just ignores the check all or it ignores the cast altogether because it knows it already fits and goes on and throws the original exception so that is that is mostly just to clean up a stack trace were one to occur but in theory if this is all set up correctly it shouldn't throw an exception unless the is not built the way that is expected so this is a bad idea let's go ahead and talk about more bad ideas there are always lots of people who have bad ideas at times and in the Minecraft botting scene, I have just a list of these here. How can someone circumvent Forge's security checks? If you come from a Forge modding background, you might know that it has a security manager, at least in the older versions, which would not allow you to call system.exit. It would warn or it would scream at you and be unhappy about it. Uh, what if someone wants to modify the behavior of the mod loader itself? This is something that quite a few people have done. Uh, it's probably most well known in gross fabric hacks, which uses it in order to allow more, univer or more capable f uh, changes in classes. Uh, what if you want to work around Mixin because Mixin maybe prevents a certain modification? That has been used less so, but also in gross fabric hacks, allowing you to reapply Mixins after they've already been applied. It allows you to add custom ASN changes before and after Mixin applications. Or, yeah, words are hard. And how would you do any of this kind of uh, any of these kinds of things? In, in general, you probably shouldn't do them. And in the, some scenarios, you might have to. So, what can we do with all of this? There are, there are lots of bad ideas. 
uh, as I just showed, but is there a better way? Is there some way that we could go about doing this without needing all of those checks, all of those replacements of mod, and mod loader internals, all those kinds of things? So one such option that we have coming is Chasm. Short for Collision Handling ASM, it is a library that a few people are, are doing great at uh, cr uh, creating for the modding scene in general. Uh, they did a talk at BlanketCon 2022 on how Chasm works under the hood. For the most part, it is still correct as it's more on the theoretical side on that and less on the uh, implementation. And it is a very low level kind of manipulation that allows you to change things with the requirement being that it's not actually going to check to make sure that whatever you're changing is legal. Uh, Chasm, a, sh a tiny little portion of the previous talk, states that uh, it's up to the JVM verifier to make sure that, it, that all the bytecode is legal, and it's up to the Chasm uh, creators to ensure that that behavior is kept. And uh, as, I, as I may have just said, Chas the Chasm creator, or the, the people creating the Chasm files and the transformations, it's a very low-level thing. It's essentially extensible. And it is actually Turing complete if, if you're interested in that, uh, but it allows you to do just about any kind of transformation with the ability to add dependencies and such throughout the entire thing. Another option that we have that is less on the far term is mix and extras created by Lamalad7. Uh, no clue if they're here currently, but if they were, that'd be really cool. Uh, Lamalad7 has created this tool to allow more options when creating mixins. Like it allows you to, within a method, depend on very specific local variables or possibly uh, add some custom state in there in order to persist through multiple injections. It's available right now. You can use it. I have a link there. It's a bit harder to remember. But it is there, and it is available for anyone to use. So in a general conclusion here, we have unsafe, we have reflection, we have ASM. All of them are not particularly good for the for a mod developer to use. Now, Chasm, Mixin, and generally open to contribution loaders, which the actually two largest are, they, those are actually unplayable. No clue who that added. Uh, Chasm, Mixin, and open source and open to contribution loaders are really good for the modder and are suggested for end results. Now, uh, Chasm is still not yet ready. It's a bit sad, uh, but it is in development. You can have, uh, you can speak out if there's anything that you think might not be the best about how it is right now, anything like that. But Mix and Extras, as no, I just I would... said, is available Right now, you can use it and have much easier time creating more complex mods. Mm. So I've got some questions here real quick. Uh, a smiley face, because of course we need one of those every so often. But uh, here's one. 
Uh, can you give an example of a use case where a mod developer might Not want weak. to use unsafe and the Why it, other it's options? Why like crazing up like insane? Uh, you might want Christ. unsafe and other internal things in order to access some particular portions of maybe other classes that have particular implementations you want or need. Or like in the case that I had said before, gross fabric hacks, they used it to allow mods to create more diverse kinds of uh, additions. Oh. Well, my computer just... I no clue if I, could, if I cut out or anything. But overall, the unsafe and ASN things are designed for... Uh, are being used in scenarios for creating the ability to transform better and more options. Uh, uh, here's, here's a fun, here's a fun thing that's, or I'll do this one first. Why use this instead of access wideners? Access wideners I did not bring up because they do not offer the same kind of, uh, ability to transform as others but access wideners are a great option for most mod developers with the main caveat being that it takes a little bit more time to set up both within the development environment and also in the uh in your fabric mod json or quilt mod json or whatever it is to get it running at runtime it also is, uh, you also have to have a different format called Access Transformers if, you're wa if you want to do the same thing on Fabric, or on Forge, I mean, which makes it a little bit harder to get the same kind of universal usability. Uh, bad, bad ideas are probably a Mojang moment at times, but generally everyone can uh, end up doing it. How might quilt loader plugins play into mod loader behavior? This is a great question. And quilt loader plugins are absolutely going to be doing this. It is a very, it's generally designed for the extensibility that you would need in situations like this. And quilt loader plugins overall will allow you to continue on and actually get into all of the different things I mentioned before without needing to go through an immense internal breaking uh, dangerous process under the hood. So quilt loader plugins will probably be used in situations such as uh, getting forge mods to work on quilt that has been in the talks for quite a while and um, with there's uh there's actually some work done on that it's been shown off in the showcase channels that is true i i uh, have not looked too much into showcase channels but yeah it is there as well so uh both loader plugins being used at large as well as chasm and forge mods have all undergone some experimentation to get into a hopefully soon future where that is all there. Here is one question that I saved because it's only partially related, but who am I? I am often called Chris online, uh, and I primarily am the guy who runs the cozy bot nowadays. Uh, with G-Dude being the new key holder, he does less of the community management things. And so I've, in part, just taken over the role of keeping Cozy at least running uh, in the Quilt Discord. 
I am also, as I had said at the beginning, part of Duvet. We are just a small team of people who want to see Quilt being used in mods across all versions. And I have worked in the Duvet environment in part to work on getting Risugami mod loader mods to load under Quilt, which would be really neat if I could actually get it to work consistently, but there's always some small bugs that I've found. Uh, here's a good question. Does ASM allow dynamic runtime transformations? In part, it sort of does, but the main problem with that is that you have to ensure that you are, that the conditions or whatever you're trying to do are checked before the class is loaded. Unless you have something like uh, instrumentation along with a DCE VM, a special version of the JVM, which allows more general class transformations. We then have, uh, if ASM and Mixon attempt to change the same thing, which takes priority, whichever comes first. ASM is not really built into the loader environment. And so if a class does anything with modifying ASM, they either are doing it in a Mixon plugin, in which case it'll either happen on the uh, before load or after load, depending on where the developer puts it, or it will happen completely separate of Mixin in some external implementation. Like uh, Gross Fabric Hacks also has the same before and after Mixin uh, transformation times that you are able to set when you when the ASM modification applies relative to Mixin modifications. Uh, here is a very long one. Uh, that isn't actually a question, but fun knowledge. Steam and Rails uh, from uh, uh, Create uh, Extension Mod used to use Unsafe to implement dynamic trap models. Uh, that does sound like a good use case, but uh, as as they say, they found a better trick, and it's always a good idea to get away from ASM and things if it's or ASM unsafe reflection those things if it's possible because it's hard to get through uh this one uh yes you can come over come up i would presume up to the blanket con uh people to decide that though the next session isn't until uh, i believe more than an hour away so we would have some time uh, before that, uh, uh, it probably wouldn't be on the stage itself, but uh, in the seating area, you can info dump probably. But I do believe that is all the questions we have currently. So if anyone else has a question, now would be the time to submit it to the queue. Uh, we have uh, 20 minutes officially before it is time for this keynote, or before we run out of time on this keynote. So questions are welcome, whatever you feel you would want to do. Apparently, that's throwing tomatoes at me. If, 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 um, if now works is a good time, I... I w it would probably be a good time for me to just go in now and 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 until how until either a question comes in or or you have to. Um, in the uh, back, can, you can get can, TBH blocks, which can use can, TFE. Uh, can 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 I, can can is there can any can everyone hear me presently, or should I go somewhere more central? Okay, good, good. Yeah, so, um, hold on, I need to pick up my Steam Deck so I can pace a bit to help myself focus, but <laughs> doesn't take in my meds, but, yeah. Dubai's an interesting project, um, uh, Vix here 
wanted to run a Minecraft Hi. server going from <laughs> Hi, yes. going from beta 1.001 all the way trying to get until the latest Minecraft version we could, uh, just continually updating. Um, literally, the- literally not even six hours into that server, we all- we, as- as anyone who knows us would expect, already had the idea of trying to run Quilt on it. Um, yeah, um, th that night, there was literally already a Quilt Loader PR that with a, with a patch to fix a, a, a small issue that was preventing Quilt from running on that, and by the- and by the next day, we literally already ha- were going. Um, we used Enigma with a janky setup t to try mapping the game and stuff. Um, that's, uh, and, yeah. Dubai's an interesting project. We've, we've got, um, we've, we've got, um, yeah, we've got, we've, we're trying to, as, as, I, 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 I've just said, we're trying to, um, yeah, we are, Lord. yeah, we are, we are trying to, you know, just, just try modding the game. Our ultimate goal is to have a singular modding tool chain that can is just have a singular modding setup that will allow you to write a mod and so long as all of the things that it needs by the way I'm not actually reading the chat, I'm just pacing with my Steam Deck off to the side. So if anyone needs me, make actual noise in the game and I'll hear. But yeah, um but yeah, um we this is just uh, our, our our true ultimate goal is to be able to eventually be able to write a mod, run a command, and depending on what your mod does, be, be able to have a singular jar file that should be able to work universally. Period. That, that it is a full up goal that we are work, probably though. not gonna do. That we are probably not gonna get towards, but but it is a far off goal that that makes us go. Uh yes, if if it will, if it if if this if it if it does happen and we can actually do it, that would be awesome. We are I we nobody. This is just this is another of our insane ramblings. Um, um, it's like bucket, but for content mods. Yeah, literally, just in in theory, you could in theory you could have like say or or. Our original just first mod is just testing and stuff. Um, it that that would uh, yeah you that uh, run on anything from what pro likely far before beta one to oh oh one where it was developed up to the latest snapshot after enough time after after in in we have another question. Oh, we have uh, this question. I don't think it actually got submitted and then went and found it and picked it up. How do you feel about instrumentation into the JDK to let uh, user code use yarn names at runtime? Now, that is a bit of a strange option. Um, as it's, it's probably a lot easier to just remap the mod when you load it rather than have runtime stuff. Yeah, uh, one thing is that uh, Nil Loader, created by Unascribed, the fantastic one behind a lot of getting the server to actually work, uh, they've made a uh, they've made the project Nil Loader, which is designed around whatever Minecraft mappings or whatever the Minecraft thing is, it would load. Uh, it, it would try to remap the mods themselves to the runtime environment that Minecraft is in, Benjamin. rather than the other way around. Neoforge, yes, that is what that that is what many of the uh, people are doing, and I will not go into more. Uh, I would just not like to. <laughs> it gets to be a lot. I I will. I'd like to say one one thing. Um, if you, if if anyone here thinks they would be, they would they would be of help to Dubai or even just want to pro provide moral support like we mostly do. Uh, there is, you can literally just find us on GitHub. There there there's there's pro literally any literally anyone from the Dubai team here hearing 
including us, who would be more than happy to provide a link to the Discord server yeah. or whatever. We we can use we we can and will use all the help we can get and then some. We we need it. Yippee. We're we're just a we're just a we're just kind of a, a team of, of of we're just kind of a team of mostly queer little weirdos on the on just in, just 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 from our. Just on the internet from around the world who all who all love block game and want to do stuff. Please help. Please send help. Please please send help. Not in the dev team, send help. None of us are saying. I will give you zero dollars. Negative one. Kill you. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> what is going on? Oh, hmm, I wonder if my controller will actually cooperate this time. I didn't keep it enough so I can actually activate it. Hello. Guess who just got back again? Hello. If anyone's got questions, remember you just gotta throw them onto the conveyor belts that are underneath the front of the stage as well as in front of the streaming seat. I um I I, I do I I, I, I would like to also mention completely unrelated to what we was talking about. Um uh pro tip to anyone trying to use controlify you will probably see really weird weird edge cases. I'm experiencing one now. Steam Deck does not properly cooperate for some reason. I can at least on Windows, it probably is just an artifact of Windows. Before anyone asks, yes we do in fact run Windows. <laughs> And no, we and no, you cannot ask. You cannot hit, and 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 no, you will not get. And no, you will not get anything more than just angry bean if you, if if you if you say anything negative. Yeah, Windows is Windows is supported on the Steam. Look, look, look for this form factor of machine. We need it. We've been thinking about running Nix OS, so we're going to go even farther from 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 Steam OS than Windows. <laughs> I already, already, already got, already got, already got Nick, already got Nick, Nick's OS on the laptop. Yippee, 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 yippee. <laughs> so, hello. We have another question. I'm, uh, Trans Sony. you I don't know if that's the name, but that's what it shows up as. It didn't entirely get, uh, in the thing, so. Uh, if if you want, you could either send it in the chat, or uh, I I can find you and you can chuck a book at me so I can read it from there, and actually get the whole uh, question. Very nerds when someone mentions Nick, so that's so true. Okay, I should probably mute so I can go rip off and so I can go around and stuff. They're kissing. Oh my god. Yeah, you got. You, you, you gotta have them kissing, it's important. Lovers. Lovers. Uh, I mean, wireless VR streaming, uh, if, if you don't mind some jank, then. I mean, Nick here could probably t tell you all about it, but ALVR actually can, like, it can work great, but it can also work like hot garbage. <laughs> That is if you have if you have a quest if, if you have if you're using a quest or like I don't know like a Gear VR or something you literally, you literally can just do that it's it's amazing uh, um I I want I oh just like I'm that. I'm thankfully never going to have to deal with that I will literally just like in a few years drop a drop a grand on it and drop drop a grand on an index and be done true just, index is base yeah okay, Valve index I have one I have one it's good. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thing it just who know who know 
Who knows? Who know? Who knows? May, may, who knows? Maybe in, I don't know, a year or two's time at this event, you'll get to see me going around in VR. I will kill you. <laughs> That'd be really I, that, Honestly, I, I, I probably could, I probably could right now, but I'm just like, way yeah. too lazy. I'm too, I'm too I tired. Was I, no, I would Wait, does the book have to be signed for it to work in the machine? No. Or? No, that's actually- No, I act the, the, the way I actually got my name onto mine was literally just not signing it, and then just manually signing it. Like, putting- putting at the bottom, hyphen, okay, space, name. Okay, like, if the internal machinery set up there that makes it display on no. screen, like, half is- No, 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 design. no, that's- No, um, there's- No, the way- the way computer craft works, you- You can read- You can read- You can read the attributes off of books, and it will just tell you a few attributes for- For, like, the, um, the- The- the contents and the for like the contents and the and the name of who who signed it and that's stuff so yeah yeah you can just that's how i did mine because you know i i i know i i know enough about it as um a um uh intermediate level cc dev i i'm not i'm not insane i swear i say literally right after say basically saying that i'm insane <laughs> Well, we got- we have more questions. Uh, from Anonymous, I'm not sure on the full thing because it doesn't show up, but uh, they've had a lot of issues tracing issues when mods have mixins. Has there been missing. any effort in making them easier to identify, I'm guessing is what I was saying. Uh, yes, there are many oh different God, mods that Minecraft add extra information. <laughs> Uh, one of them that is in use on the server right now is called Mix and Trace, which runs through a stack trace, finds any and all, uh, any and all classes that have mixins into them, and then reports on them. So that way, if you find something from a particular mod or injection or something that's gone wrong it's easier to look through just those specific mixins rather than having to look through your entire system. When Linux, it depends on who you're talking about. I'm guessing the server is running on Linux, so have fun with that. You, you, Where's you the too. best place for you, you, you learning use Linux Java? Uh, this is a hard one. I personally wow. learned from just trying and and messing around but other people have learned in other ways and i would not be the one who'd be good at recommending one particular way of learning um one thing you should know is that it's always okay to ask for help All right, then we have uh, what makes Forge or what does Forge do that makes ASM modifications a pain? I don't know what the okay, rest of the question up, is, up. but uh, ASM ends up being hard to work with in Forge. For it's actually a bit easier than in Fabric because with Fabric you have to do very intensive uh, maneuvers around how it's set up, but with Forge, the core modding system that allows you to make these changes, especially in the past focused on making the changes with, with JavaScript and using uh, the dynamic typeness of the thing. Uh, I've been told the end of the question is, or asks, uh, asks if the other solution or, I don't know. Is that for this question? I do not recall who submitted this question. Uh, Poetic Rainbow, were you the one? Uh, a couple questions ago, it stated. Uh, oh, for. Okay, for that. I can't exactly remember, but yet. Yeah, if the, do the other solutions I talk about today have similar tools like Mix and Trace? No. Mixin is unique in its extensibility, whereas the other ones, for the most part, are uh, can only have wrappers around them, more so than actually being extended or otherwise 
added with more uh, capabilities. So Mixin is overall a good choice for creating mods or allowing others to create more complex mods if you can go through the work of creating such extensions like Mixin Extras. Uh, will this talk be uploaded to YouTube? Uh, yes, there are people recording, is, as far as I know, and uh, they will be uploading their talks uh, to YouTube, or other. Or I believe there a couple are being streamed, so that way you are able to view all of this in the future. How can normal people help with all of this? That is a fantastic question, because uh, as, as a developer, I often forget that lots of people are not developers. But in general, uh, you can help out with the modding projects by doing things such as providing translations. If there is a particular mod that you really like, and you know another language, but that language is not supported by that mod, Assuming that mod is open source, you can go to that mod and and create a pull request with the other language. That is, I believe, the most common way that a person that isn't familiar with development would be able to uh, help out. Of course, people are also saying uh, in chat that you can you can also donate to mod developers or even downloading on Modrinth or Chrisforge provides a little bit of uh, a little bit of income for the mod developers as well. So if you just go about your day, you can be helping uh, developers with uh, being able to do this or otherwise can contribute things like trans or like uh, trans I forgot the word translations, or uh, if you if you're good at designing, you could uh, be an artist for one or more mod developers as well. How old do they? Uh, this is fantastic. How old do they handle jar mods with Risugami? The thing about mods from that era is pretty much every single mod that did anything of note had to have been a jar mod in order to add extra functionality. Of course, there are simple mods, like I found a mod for testing that adds T, and that was simply adding some additional items and classes for those items. But in the vast majority of cases, including like single player commands, you need to have jar mods to change the thing. Right now, I have not learned enough about uh, Chasm in order to write any kind of thing like that, but I have uh, gone through the effort of uh, finding if I can just find any class which has changed, uh, remove all of the methods that have not changed, and then and then pass the and then pass that class with all of the un or with all only the changed methods as well as all the fields to Mixin, then Mixin can do the work of overwriting the method, allowing, at least in some cases, multiple mods to uh, jar mod the same mod without causing immense problems. Uh, here's a question: How uh, what? Tools or resources, I do not exactly know how this is being read. Do you miss to attain parity with Forge? Not 100% sure what this question is asking. But my best guess is, like, how can you get the cross-compatibility? And for that, uh, there are tools like Architecture which do most of the setup for you uh, so that way as in, in your development environment you just have your 
uh, common resources as well as your uh, forge and fabric specific things. Uh, in general, it's most of the things that interact primarily with Minecraft are probably able to just exist between the versions. But anything that would have to do with like mod compatibility probably would have to be uh, worked through on a case by case basis. Uh, there's a great talk at er, that was recorded from BlanketCon 22 that went into this uh, on how you can write a mod that works for both uh, Forge and Fabric very easily. Uh, going from Fabric to Quilt, uh, should you or should you not? Uh, they've been developing in Fabric for quite a while. They're not sure if they should switch to Quilt. I'd say if Fabric has what you need, it I'd say it's probably just fine to stick with Fabric. But for guaranteed Quilt compatibility, it'd be easier to switch to specifically dealing with uh, Quilt, Loader, and uh, QSL is that would allow you to more easily figure out if there's a particular issue in your current implementation. But it's all up to you. I personally would suggest it because QSL and QFAPI together offer a more expansive library and and Quilt allow and Quilt has more uh, developer friendly features as well. So that is uh, helpful. Uh, testing is helpful. The Steam and Rails Discord has a specific channel for testers. Uh, I did not. I, I entirely forgot that testing is a thing. If you are not a developer, you can you can go and test mods. Uh, oftentimes, mod developers are able to create the like, uh, beta or development builds where you'd be able to test and provide feedback on how to get things to work better for uh, before features officially launch. So uh, go do that if if you feel inclined or you want like the newest the latest and greatest in mods it's a great way of helping out in communities especially if you do not actually know what's happening uh so i've run out of questions again i've also gone over by four minutes but there is no there's nothing currently here so i'll i'll let some more questions come if if anyone wants them. Yeah, you've uh, got a bit more time, so go ahead and like do another question or two. Eventually, uh, someone wants a link to the Steam and Rails Discord. Uh, I'd say the best place is uh, either ask Slimus, go to their Steam and Rails page, or uh, or. Probably you could uh, ask nicely in one of the uh, existing Discord servers and someone could probably provide it for you as well. I, I do see more books falling on the conveyors, but I have no clue how many of them are actually make it in, making it in because we just had a, a lot of uh, golden carrots just end up on... On, on the uh, conveyors, so that's fun. Uh, we have a question. How should I start with Quilt? If I recall, the docs aren't that detailed. I'd use IntelliJ primarily. I do not know if there's more. Uh, a good way of starting is by at either... Uh, or a great way of just getting to the very basics of the setup is... Uh, to clone the or uh, create a copy of the quilt template mod, it has the initial setup already there for you, 
and it has QSL and QF API already uh, imported, so you wouldn't have to worry about that. Whereas if if you're new to development, you can always ask, ask a Quilt project on how you might undergo some particular process. For the most part, I do believe that uh, the libraries are better uh, are better documented in within Java Docs themselves. But uh, if you if you are willing to undergo the process of looking at the code, uh, we we could always use some help with getting uh, the developer wiki uh, created and. Uh, staying up to date. Uh, when Fabric came out, uh, it took the modding scene, scene by storm. I'm not sure on the rest of this. I'm guessing it's why do people prefer either Quilt or Forge or I don't know, but why why would someone prefer a specific loader? In general, it comes down to what they're looking for. For for Forge, a lot of the time, it is the easiest option to get started with as it has a lot of, uh, it has a very large uh, API coverage and it already has an abundance of mods. Uh, but Fabric is a very, er, Fabric has taken a lot of people by surprise with its lightweightness. Fabric is a super lightweight mod loader, essentially having the bare minimum. And as a result, it can end up providing large performance benefits over Forge. Then Quilt is uh, in the same vein as Fabric, but it's generally easier for uh, the mod libraries being more capable than the fabric ones as well. Thanks for doing this on something that th this person did not understand and still don't understand. Well, you're welcome. That's what happens. Uh, overall, it's really hard to get into this kinds of things, and I'd suggest to never get into this, these kinds of things. Uh, unsafe is not a good idea to work with, but sometimes it's the only option or the most reasonable option to go about something. So in general, that's when the goal is be creating a more... Uh, De developer friendly environment and so yeah overall it it's a good idea to get people to be more open to the mod loaders and getting them in good positions i've run out of questions here there's one floating just on the on say globe there's okay. There's one more there. It's coming in. Is it possible for a mod to remove features? Absolutely. Uh, there are probably not too many use cases other than probably like uh, at or like removing like hunger or things like that are probably what people would want the most. But yeah, you can absolutely remove features. Uh, and it ends up being, for the most part, within some reasonable capability with mixins. I've been tossed a book. I have no clue how I received it, but I've been tossed this book. Uh, I can read it out to you. Who is John Modern? The answer: Find out. Uh, you have all. You have all of this convention to figure it out. So have fun with that. Well, uh, removing phantoms, yes, people can do that. I've run out of questions, hopefully for real this time. Uh, thanks all for 
coming to this talk. If you understood none of it, well, that just happens. Uh, come back in about 45 minutes or a bit more, a bit less, something like that, to see the modern th Q&A. Uh, there are many other things happening at, at this event, so stick around and ha have fun to all of you people. Oh, wait, hold on. People keep chucking books. All right, well, neither of these questions were actually questions. So with that, I'll be saying goodbye, and I've been given a tomato to throw at all of you, so have fun. This will greatly affect the economy.